Hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, so here we are, eight minutes to talk about everything you could possibly want to know about raising kids in digital age. Easy, eh? Um, so <laughs> honestly, I'm not trying to give you parenting advice. This is coming from the perspective of someone who spent 17, 18 years in the digital environment and, has th and thinks that understanding the digital environment is important for all of us. All of us work with kids, whether we've got any, which I don't, or not. Um, so really thinking about how we use this space and how we're good role models is really important for what I'm thinking about. Uh, a recent headline said, Internet is a lawless jungle too dangerous for children to use, a former government advisor warned, and that was only this month. Another headline, Britain spend more time using tech devices than asleep, reels Ofcom. Schoolgirl sports team captain committed suicide after visiting pro-anorexia websites. Now, if you'd just seen all of those, I think you'd run away and not let your kids anywhere near the internet. If you were just reading the newspaper headlines, you'd be thinking their children are all addicted to screens, they're being adopted via Facebook, they're giving away all their information, they're sexting, running up bills, becoming couch potatoes, watching porn, meeting strangers and bullying and trolling at every opportunity. That's a cheerful picture, isn't it? What we need to remember is that I'm exaggerating, but so does the news. The news is looking for bad news, new news. If it's in the news, it means it's not happening to everyone. And I find that quite encouraging to think about. Um, but the trouble is that those kind of newspaper headlines leave people feeling that there's very little that they can do to improve the situation and that the end is nigh. <laughs> it's all hopeless. Um, there's a guy called Dan Gardner who's written a book called Risk, and he noted that we are the healthiest, wealthiest, safest generation in history, but the most terrified. And he was talking about 9-11, and when that happened, people gave up going on planes and started taking their cars. The year after, there was 5,000 more car accidents than there'd been the previous year, but because they were all small incidents, they didn't make the news in the same way and not news, newsworthy. And a lot of the time, this is the same as we're kind of looking at technology. We hear the big stories and we break into, out into what is known as a moral panic, in which people feel completely out of control. The technology is doing this stuff to us, which is known as technological determinism. We have no choice, the machine makes us. Rather than thinking, although the new technology offers us new possibilities and maybe removes things that we've done before, rather like a brick, we can decide whether we're going to build a house with this technology or whether we're going to throw it through someone's window. We've got choices about how we use that. And some of those choices will involve more resistance against the cultural norm than others. So we need to think about where we really should focus our attention. The newspapers will tell us that our children are digital natives and we can't understand their experience because we haven't been through it. But what they know, they have learned. They didn't come out of the womb knowing how to do all this stuff. They've learned it because the culture is around them, which means we can all learn it as well. They're not beyond our reach. Uh, Tanya Byron in 2008 did the Byron report for the government and said, the f I found the more I understood what my children were experiencing, the more I felt empowered to support them to go online responsibly and safely, and the more freedom I felt comfortable for them to have. When we think about this, we also have to remember that not all children absolutely love technology. Studies have shown that many use it just because it's there. They're not particularly interested in technology itself. Uh, there's a significant number who aren't interested at all. Um, and that's across all the kind of age spectrums. And we have to remember in all of this, no one knows all of it. So don't feel embarrassed to let children show you what they're doing online. For many of them, they will simply have found a new way to do old things. For example, children are now reading more and more now, but, but using e-readers. When I grew up, I had my nose in a book the whole time. People didn't say I was addicted to books, but people will say that children are addicted to screens. And we need to think about the message we're giving as we say that kind of thing. Talking to children about technology is quite a big deal, and I think for my, many parents it's probably more nerve-wracking than the, the sex talk. Um, but this is the most powerful tool and technique you've got communicating. Think about where your kids turn to for advice and make sure that you are one of those people that they want to talk to, that they'd rather bring their problems to you than to a stranger online, bearing in mind that stranger danger and grooming are incredibly rare. 
Um, and especially thinking about once children hit the 13 year age, which is when they're legally allowed to go on Facebook and Twitter and all these kind of sites. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I like to encourage people to do is think that if you've got any negative statements to make about technology, you try and accompany them by positive ones and help people see the possibilities. Um, looking back at what Chelsea Clinton happened when she grew up as a child of um, US President Bill Clinton, is they used to talk about TV and radio that she'd listened to at the dinner table and talk about what was good, what was bad, and what she wanted to do a bit more in depth. So a great tool for the family to develop is an internet safety agreement. There's loads that you can download online, but the best ones and the most effective ones have been shown to be ones that you develop as a family that fits your situation and is adapted uh, with input from the kids. Janelle Burley gave her son Gregory an iPhone in 2013, and she finished it with, You will mess up. I will take away your phone. We will sit down and talk about it. We will start over again. You and I, we are always learning. I am on your team. We are in this together. It is my hope that you can agree to these terms. Most of the lessons listed here do not just apply to the iPhone, but to life. You're growing up in a fast and ever-changing world. It is exciting and enticing. Keep it simple every chance you get. Trust your powerful mind and giant heart above every machine. I love you. I hope you enjoy your new awesome iPhone. Merry Christmas. That's what you expect here in August, right? Uh, <laughs> but think about what Janelle said to her son. Most of these lessons apply to life, not just to the phone. And I really think what people do online is a kind of amplification of their offline selves. So we need to know who we are and what we stand for online. What values do we want to embody online? Honesty, friendliness. Think about the fruits of the spirit, what that looks like online. Patience and self-control. Just because you can press send, should you actually press send straight away? Think about whether you need to pay, wait a bit longer. Love, think about the person at the other end of the screen and be prepared to come in and help those who are being bullied by others. Remember that children need role models, both in values and behavior. If parents appear to have mobiles surgically attached to them or are demonstrating gracious conversation online, then we have no leg to stand on when we try and remonstrate with the children. So when I was just finishing writing um, this book at the end of the year, um, there was a statement posted by Will Taylor, who's communications manager, youth worker and dad, and it seemed to sum up what I was trying to get across. Know your own children, do it for them, do it with them, watch while they do it themselves, let them do it for themselves. So thank you for listening, and go and enjoy the adventures that the online world can give you. Thank you, Bex. Thanks, Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you.